Greetings, one and all. Welcome back to Old Time Hockey. Story mode. Yes, we are back here once again, right at the end of the regular season. We are on a six, a 23 game winning streak with the Scoogle Kill Hinto Brews, or however they're called. I really don't care. 1,177 penalty minutes. And we have a home game against the Stonemasons. Then we have a newspaper article or something. Another home game, and then we're done. And that's it. So that'll be it for the regular season. But we have booked ourselves a ticket to the Bush Hockey League playoffs. So next episode, we will start the playoffs. But first, Tuesday, March 9th, 1976. The Hinto Brews host the Stonemasons. So, game objectives. Win one or more stick fights. Allow only three goals or less. And have one of your players take at least three shots. Shouldn't be a problem. The only one we need to worry about is the stick fight one. So, 2-5-2 two, and two are the Charlestown Stonemasons. And the Hinto Brews are now 5-5-4. Five, five, and four. So, I think with veteran difficulty, you have to hit 5-5-5 five, five, and five by the end of the season. And, of course, <laughs> Marty Lissman, our coach, our general manager, and our owner. He's in the hospital. Because the Hinto Brews... The Hinto Brews uh, advertising and their partnership with us, they've had to have a load of layoffs. They've downsized. So it looks like our advertising with them might be en might be over. Our sponsorship might be gone. So we, might, we, just, we won't be the Hinto Brews anymore. We'll be the Scoogle Kills. Oh, God. So one or more stick fights. Don't allow more than three goals. Have one of your players take at least three shots. Shouldn't be a problem. So Longhouse Arena, Pottsville, PA. <laughs> 2,836 people can attend. Myron Bronson, hello, sir. How are you? Butch Fenton, there he is, 21 years old, 171 penalty minutes. Wow. Lou Petit, 19 years old, 678 save percentage. Also, Dwight Hickey, 28 years old, 20 goals. Where were your 20 goals last game when I injured you? And Mario Lochhead, 21 years old, 553 save percentage. Here we go then, boys. So, start that off. Boom, right there. <laughs> get the hip check to start the game. And another hip check. We're about to get on the momentum. And if we get this pass, can we get this pass off? I did press the pass button like twice. Shot. Oh, good try. And a hip check. There you go. So we're on the momentum already. Boom. Get clotheslined. Okay, hook him. Okay, careful. Don't allow any more. Don't allow any goals. Don't allow any goals. Okay, missed. Wow. Okay then. So when I say don't allow any goals, that doesn't mean let Cliff Parnassus score a goal. How come they get to do the woo-woo-woo all the time? I want to do it. Oh, it's not fair. I want the woo-woo-woo. All right, carefully does it. Right, so no more no more goals. Boom. Oh, okay, knocked over one of my own players in the process. Oh, for God's sake. Right, we got it. Let's go and score a goal, Roy Sterling. Good plan. And shot. Oh, come Oh, rebound. He got it again. Didn't quite get the goal, though. Boom. So we've got the momentum again. Oh, look at that clothesline. Beautiful. Right, go. Didn't want to pass to him. Okay, Roy Sterling's got it. He's got it. And he shoots. Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, he's already had... He's already had three shots. So we've already done that objective. Oh, and he's been hit again. Bloody hell. Right, let's go. Let's go. Oh, careful. Up to Goff. Goff's got space. He's in. He shoots. Ah, oh, and a save by the goalie. Doesn't matter. Oh, careful. Careful. Ow. I don't appreciate that. Deke. Oh, look at those Deeks. Look at those Deeks. He's through. Oh, he just can't pull the trigger, though. Right, we'll hit a couple of guys with the momentum. Carefully does it. Oh, delayed penalty as well. Nice. Shot. And a goal. Roy Sterling. Fourth shot of the game. And Sterling from Barney Williams. Here we go. Woo! 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 -hoo -hoo! Nice job, boys. Okay. Lovely. Boom. Oh, I wanted to try and get the other one in there. Boom. And boom. And we're back on the momentum already. Nice. So just like that, we're, we're really trying to make them forfeit this game. So drop pass. Good shot. And a goal. There you go. Drop pass, slap shot, glove side. Awesome. Gump Monaghan from Fenton and Barney Williams. Brushing off that dust. Nice job, boys. We've got this sorted. Boom. Oh, we've got a fight going. I mean, it was going to happen at some point. Okay, careful. Right, here we go. Dwight Hickey against Butch Fenton. Boom. Get that first punch in. Dodge. Dodge. There you go. Good good job. And boom. Dwight Hickey. See you later, buddy. Nice. Uh, well, th thanks for coming out, I guess. But um, you need to go. Right, we've got another fight going on here. Oh, we've started a massive line brawl, basically. Harry O'Neill. 
Afro McGee. This is vengeance. Sit down. I don't have to see your shitty little bloody Afro this entire game. God, I'm really, really digging into them with these insults today. I'm glad I don't have to see his bloody Afro the rest of the game. Oh, look at that hit by Roy Sterling on Gene McConvey. Mate, you got no chance. We've already injured three of their players. We have pretty much... We've made a massive dent in their bench already. And I love it. There you go. So here we go. Another one. Another one. Chris Sharp. Yeah, Chris Sharpley. Andre Mason. Dodge that. Lovely. Four straight injuries for their players. Sit down, boys. Lovely. I mean, you deserve it. <laughs> That's what you get for trying to beat me in a, in a bloody game. Oh, dosed. Lovely. Good job. And there you go. Five straight injuries on the Charles Town Stonemasons bench. I bet they're not going to have many people sitting on the bench for the rest of the game. Oh, look at that. Jesus. I think that might be my thumbnail right there. Bloody hell. I want to look at their bench now. So there, there's one guy on, our, on the penalty box. Let's just have a look at their bench. They have a couple of guys left. They have about four guys left on their bench. Wow. And a shot. Oh, a save by the goalie. Okay. Hustle back. Boom. Oh! <laughs> what a hip check. These hip checks are so satisfying. Right, careful. Careful. We've got this, boys. It's all right. It's, it's fine. It's fine. We've got this. Okay, tried the pass out there. Doesn't matter. Oh, good pass. Over to number five. And shot. Boom. A 3-1 lead there. Lovely. Nice. So, Andre Mason from Keister and Mulnahan. And... Woo! 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 Nice job, boys. We've got this one in the bag. Nice. Good hit. Oh, and we're on the momentum. Just what I like to see. Hup! Oh, I missed him. Okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh, that was bad. Two line offside. Boop. Just take him out. Oh, shit. I didn't realise we had it. Whoops, my bad. Hustle back and get it, boys. Right, pass. Okay, that was an awful pass. And pass. And pass. Oh, careful. Oh, there's a guy right there, dude. What the hell happened? Gunther Smith, what happened to your speed? You were so bloody slow there. Hello. Hello, stonemasons. You're right, lads. Right, let's go for a uh, clothesline. And another cl Oh, I think I might have just hit the ref there. It doesn't matter, though. And I didn't hit the ref there. Oh, and that'll be the end of the first period. So a 3-1 lead for the Hinto Brews against the Stonemasons after the first period of play. Not not a bad job there from the Hinto Brews so far. So uh, we've got one player taking three shots. So that's fine. Allow only three goals or less. We're doing okay on that so far. We haven't had a stick fight to win yet. So let's keep it going. So we've still got the momentum. So just keep hitting, guys, really. Boom. So, we've got another fight going. I hope there's a stick fight in there. Shot. Okay, Tim Young from against Roy Sterling. Okay. Okay, come on. There you go. Good job, boy. Good job, Sterling. Punch him some more. And Tim Young, you're down. We will uh, limit their bench by one more player. We've had completely perfect fights so far, I think. Right, we'll go to this one next. Okay. There you go. Marcus Erickson. You, you guys really need to learn to fight. And another guy off their bench. Wow. This is quite embarrassing, if I'm honest. Like, I, I really should not be winning these fights anymore. Charles Atkinson. So you get another punch. Oh, my God. We have injured, like, seven straight Stonemason players. This is beyond a joke now. Like, what's going on? All I need to do is just keep punching them and dodging the occasional punch. Right, here's their captain. Get another punch in there. And he's down as well. That's like eight straight fights we have injured their players. They must run out of players by the end of these fights. They must have. Okay. Butch Fenton against Cliff Parnassus. We've got this. Don't worry, I'll just keep spamming the punch button. I'll wait till you, till you uh, miss the dodge. And Parnassus is down as well. They only had like four players left on their bench. We've injured like five here. Jesus. Jesus. Yep, there you go. So we didn't win the stick fight. Not a problem. We didn't allow more than three goals. And we had a player take three shots. So a 3 1 win there for the Hinto Brews. Roy Sterling with, with a goal. Monaghan, two points. And Andre Mason with a goal. Wow. <laughs> and that is how you win games. So that only took about 10 minutes. Wow. I, I was expecting that to take a lot longer. 
but we managed to just basically beat everyone up. We did, we got what like five minutes into the second period before we beat everyone up. God, I love the Hinto Brews. They're great, aren't they? They're bloody brilliant. <laughs> So, do we get another toughness point? We do not. Oh, we need that extra toughness point. So, rest in peace. <gasps> no! Marty Lisman! Thursday, March 11th, 1976. Marty Lisman passes away at age 81 after a heart failure. Lisman dead. Lisman passes away at age 81 after a heart failure. A player's coach, loved by most, hated by rivals. No! Marty Lisman. Guys, we need to win the Bush Hockey League Cup for Marty. We need to do it for him. This is the story that we need. We've got to do it, boys. Do it for him. Marty. No. I loved you. Even though you did trade away a washing machine. And our beer cooler. I still loved you. R.O.P. Marty Lisman. Thank you for everything you've done. You brought in some solid players. Now rest in peace, my friend. So silence on the ice. Bruce hit the ice mournful after their long-time manager and coach passes. This is the last game of the season, I believe. So here we go. Game objectives. Win the game, win the bench brawl, score 10 or more goals. Well, okay then. Score 10 or more goals against the War Road Ice Anglers, who are going 4-2-2. Two two. Uh, Sad and Bruce hit the ice to take on the ice anglers tonight. With the Bruce future uncertain, it's tough to predict how the rest of this season will unfold. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Oh, that is so sad, though. Ah, Poor Lisman. Poor guy. So, it sounds like the music stopped early. Is that like the moment of silence? Because I kind of ruined that, didn't I? So we have to win. We have to score 10 goals. Well, not don't have to, but we need to win the bench brawl as well. So Longhouse Arena, Pottsville. 2,836 people can turn up. Larry Cinder. Ah, oh, this is sad. Roy Sterling, 77 points on the season. 20 years old. Lou Petit, 678 save percentage. He's getting almost up to the 700 range. Butch Johnson, 27 years old, 52 points. Not too bad for him. And Jeffrey O'Reilly, 22 years old, 481 save percentage. Ah, uh, right, here we go then. Here we go. Let's get this going. Win that face. Oh, wow. Oh, there is a fight right off the bat. Oh, my God. I was not expecting this. Walter King, Bradley Boulder. Oh, the goalie's gone in. <laughs> wow. We're doing it for Marty. And Walter King's down. My goodness. Everybody, literally, we are having a massive line brawl here right now. Oh my goodness. This has just turned completely crazy. My God. Right, there we go. Dodge that punch. Eugene Saborin. Sorry, mate, but you've got to go down as well. This is for Marty. Kill him. <laughs> Good job, boys. The coach is shouting at them. The Ice Anglers coach is like, come on, boys. Another fight here. God, this has taken a strange turn. What a way to celebrate Marty Lisman by going and beating up all of the ice anglers. The, the second I won that face off, everybody was ready to kill someone. I have never seen that in this game. I don't think I'll ever see it again. But wow, Danny Krasansky. Sorry, mate, you've got to get punched in the face. There you go. See, dodge a little bit too early. I get to punch you. So it looks like if we keep going the way that we're going, we're going to end up making them forfeit and we're going to win. Which will be... One of the only nil-nil forfeits we'll have. I mean, there's one guy there not trying to kill anybody. Jeffrey O'Reilly against Lou Petit. Oh, the two goalies are going at it, and the Hinto Bruce goalie manages to take out O'Reilly. Crikey, O'Reilly, mate. He gets punched in the face. Nice. Another fight. Backup goalies going at it. Dennis Doust against Thomas Heckey. Oh, shit. Shit. <sighs> okay, so we haven't injured one of their goalies. Sorry, Doust. I messed that up for you, boy. I mean, you are only 17 years old. I don't know how he's got that moustache at 17 years old. Puberty must have hit him early. I right, get a punch in there straight away, boys. Come on, get a punch in there. Get a punch in there. Punch. Punch Mike Carl. I could do this all day. There you go. All right, dodge that. Barry Walters gets the hit in there. Dodge that. Oh, that was close. But Mike Carl is down. Looks like all they're going to have left is their goaltender. <laughs> the fans are absolutely loving it right now. My goodness. Right, another fight. No stick battles, though. Okay, Vinny Verone, you get hit. Butch Fenton, nice job. 
And Vinny Verone is down as well. I mean, the Ice Anglers tried to play the Hinto Brews at their own game. They tried to get physical and play the punching game. And look what happened. They've ended up getting beaten really badly. Oh my god. Lloyd Shepard. What the hell? Is that a helmet with loads of really long hair? It looks like he's got a bloody beaver pelt on his head. <laughs> what the hell is going on? But Lloyd Shepard is down as well. I love how there's no commentary for this either. Like, they've got literally nothing to say. There you go, Terry Peace. I beat up and injured your brother last game, didn't I? <laughs> See you later, buddy. Or your cousin or relative. Maybe they're not. Maybe they just have the same last name. But that doesn't matter, because he's injured as well. Yep, these guys are going to have to forfeit. These guys are most dead. Oh, he almost got me with that punch. Good. Okay, we didn't injure Bobby Neal. So there's, there's a goalie and Bobby Neal that still have enough energy to carry on, even though they'll be fatigued as fuck. So, we'll, we'll be, I'll be interested to see what happens here. S okay, shit. Two players now that have got the chance. So, they still don't have a proper forward lineup. They have a defensive pair. So, that's pretty decent. But, they're still missing out on quite a lot of stuff here. Right. Th I think this is the last fight. Roy Sterling, the captain, saves it till the end. Butch Johnson. Missed that punch. Good hit. Dodge that. Butch Johnson is down. Lovely. See you later, buddy. Roy Sterling manages to get it done. Just keep punching him in the head. Why not? Oh, there's another fight brewing. Oh, God, I didn't realise there was another one. Come on, Goff. Take out Murdoch. There you go. Good dodge. Jack Goff. Good dodge. And he's down. <laughs> Are we? I think we've injured like 10 of their players right now. Imagine the penalty minutes we're going to get from this game. And all of them have to go off. Primary objective completed. There you go. And there you go. And the shortest game in history of the Bush Hockey League has just ended. Lou Petit gets the first star. Shut them out. Dennis Doust with the second star. Shut them out. Tom Heckey, third star. Shut them out. That is the first time in probably hockey history that three goalies have been awarded, uh, have been awarded the three stars of the game for every one of them shutting out the opponent. Wow. <laughs> so is that going to end as a tie or is that going to end as a win? Because they technically had to forfeit. So that should be our win. But wow. That was something special. Win the game, win the bench brawl. There you go. We got five overall on the toughness. And I think that's as high as you can go with it. So there you go. Far out. Oh, we got ourselves a, a new trading card. Oh, we got the Marty Lissman trading card. Skoogle kill. Marty Lissman, manager coach. Ah, oh, bless him. Marty is the most winningest coach in the, of the Rough Hockey League. Nice. Leading the Omaha Chimney Sweepers to six championships in the early 30s. He then took the job to own, manage, and coach the Scoogle Kill Hinto Brews in his home state of Pennsylvania, a job he has held proudly for more than 20 years. An outspoken critic of all things in the Bush Hockey League, he has faced many fines and has forfeited almost $100,000 in salary since 1954. Bless him. Thank you, Lisman, for everything you've done. There you go. Final farewell. Reporter Bard Walker sits down with the plumbers to talk about Lisman's passing. The final farewell. Jimmy, with Marty gone, what's next for the Brews? It's been a tough couple of weeks. All I know is that we are not throwing in the towel just yet. We want to play for Marty. We want to finish the season on the right note. That's right. That's right, Jimmy Barrett. Gunther, what was your relationship with Marty like? Marty was like a father to all three of us. He coached us when we were little kids. He sponsored our Bantam team and basically paid for everything we needed as kids. We wouldn't be who we are without Marty. <laughs> Bradley, Marty lived in a, an illustrious hockey life. Is there one hockey memory that stands out? There was this time in the Rough Hockey League, where, or the Rough League, when Marty was irate regarding a spearing incident during a game against the Lewiston va Vacationers. Vacationers, wow. Marty never comes into our locker room. I mean, never. But this incident had him so angry he was fuming. During the second intermission, he stormed into our locker room, took out a $500 from his wallet, and taped, taped it to one of the sticks on the floor and screamed, Who wants a piece of that animal, Mo Odie Fryer? Oh, wow. Barrett Smith Boulder, you guys have done a heck of a job, and the town wishes you the best of luck. Thanks, Bard. Oh, wow. And there you go. I think that's the end of the regular season for the Hinto Brews. But now we move on to the playoffs. Oh, see you later, Marty Lisman. Thank you for everything you've done. Wow, look at those penalty minutes. 186, 159, 129, 124, and I think that's 120. Wow, that's a lot of penalty minutes there. Fuck me, Jesus. <laughs> but Marty Lisman, he's passed away at 82 years old. I didn't realise he was 82. He, I mean, his character looked a lot younger than 82. I would have said about 40s or 50s. 
He, it shows he just loved the ice so much. The ice seeped into his core and made him look younger. Playoff start. Sunday, March 14th, 1976. The Brews have made the playoffs and we have have round one against the Quebec Voice. So it looks like it is a best of five. So I assume you need to win three games to win. So I think that's how we'll do it. Each series will play three games. So I think we should end this episode here then. We will start next episode with the playoffs against the Quebec Voice. So yes, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.